Hey guys, it's Kevin from Relax Learn Guitar. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Hold on. I need to mute that so I don't get confused. Thanks for tuning in for a live lesson with Relax Learn Guitar. Happy to be here tonight to show you a live lesson. Uh, we're going to be covering the topic of how to strum your guitar and more specifically how to hold your guitar pick. I've had a couple of questions from some viewers on how to do this recently. So it um, seems pretty basic, but it's one of those things that you really need to uh, get right. And if you learn it correctly the first time around, it's going to serve you much better as you work through playing the guitar. So as we get started, if you want to say, there's some folks watching, if you want to say who's here and where you're from, that'd be great. You don't have to, but if you want to, that'd be great. And if you have any questions as we're going along, just feel free to um, pop those here in the comments and I'll try and answer those for you, okay? So for this topic of how to strum your guitar and how to hold your guitar pick, um, no pressure, but probably the most important thing, in my opinion, when playing the guitar is how to play guitar in rhythm. And um, as you're working through playing the guitar, if you're a new person at it, a, new, a newbie, one of the things you really want to pay attention to is uh, your timing and rhythm. And you would need to work at that sometimes. Um, if you want to, you can also let me know if you are a flat picker, which we're going to be talking about tonight, or if you like to finger pick the guitar or not. So well, we're going to start with um, the guitar pick. I think that's probably the most common way people strum the guitar. And the reason I think it's important is when you're uh, listening to music or playing the guitar or watching somebody do that or hang out at a concert, if you watch what they're doing, probably about 80% of the time they're strumming and they're playing rhythm. There are some parts where they're going to play some lead or some fills or some licks. And when people do that and maybe hit the wrong or a sour note, it doesn't take that much to correct that note. And most people, for the most part, aren't even going to notice it. But if you're playing your guitar with, in a, you know, jamming with some folks or along with a record or with a band and you're not not playing steady and in rhythm it's really noticeable the uh, thing I tell folks is uh, when you're at a concert or you're watching something on TV watching some uh, music on TV or at a bar or um, just hanging out with folks take a look at folks it's a very natural thing when you're listening to music and hearing music that you're going to tap your toe which we're going to talk about tonight and people clapping their hands so uh, hey Jim what's up Michigan tune in on the YouTube channel tonight um, as you're watching that group of people you're gonna be able to notice very easily that folks who are clapping out of time it's really noticeable so you can scan the audience and you can pick them out very quickly same thing with your ears if you're playing the guitar and it's not steady and in rhythm your ear is gonna pick it out really quickly so that's why it's important to play in rhythm to start in playing rhythm, there's a lot of stuff happening, and the first thing we're going to talk about is how to hold your pick. That's kind of where it all starts. So I've just got a, a pretty common size pick that I'll show uh, kind of as the example tonight. So uh, it's probably like a medium thickness, this size, but you're going to want to, um, I see a lot of folks when they first start out, kind of pinch, they want to pinch the pick. So they kind of pinch it between their thumb and their finger you do that or just like me doing this right now I can already feel nervous because I know it doesn't feel secure it's flopping around it's not gonna stay on my fingers long it's gonna be out of there so you want to uh, what I tell folks is to rest your pick here on the kind of the last part of your index finger and you want the pick point kind of pointing out from you and you kind of clamp your thumb down on your finger like you're clicking on remote control and you want to move up the further you move up on this pick you have maybe a quarter inch half an inch showing you have a lot more control you can hit individual strings and when you're strumming it feels nice and secure there's not you know the feeling that you're going to drop the pick and you feel more confident to be able to strum and pick. 
So the first part is to kind of get the grip right. So again, you kind of press down like a remote control and you want to hold on to it. Um, a guitar teacher way back in the day told me to, um, it's kind of like a bird. You want to hold your pick hard enough to not let it go so it doesn't fly away, but you don't want to kill it. <laughs> you don't want to crush it. There do, you need to have a little bit of like give in there. So when you're playing and strumming, you sh should feel a little bit of that pick moving in between your thumb and your finger. So first is grip. Number two is kind of the motion of strumming. And you can't strum in rhythm unless you um, are using your pick the correct way. That's kind of why I start there. So if you're watching me, strum a song or some chords. There's a bunch of stuff going on actually. And if you're strumming the guitar when you're playing 80% of the time, you're going to notice all these physical things happening. Your elbow's moving, or I should say my elbow's moving. My wrist is moving, and we're going to talk a lot about that. You probably, I mean, maybe you can hear my toe. My toe's tapping. And you're holding on to the pick, and that doesn't even count what you're doing with your fretting hand. So there's a lot of stuff to coordinate when you're strumming a guitar. The first thing to nail is the holding the pick the correct way so that you have some control. And then the next part, I'd say number two, is the wrist action. So I really slow this down. You should see my wrist rotating. It's not a, it's more of this motion and not kind of straight digging in. If I'm just digging in and playing kind of at a, whatever, horizontal to the ground. different and you'll hear this a lot with beginners they can only play in kind of one loud volume and a lot of that comes from the way they're holding the pick and the way they're strumming if you rotate your wrist and you're holding that pick with a little bit of give in there you can really control getting loud or getting soft And a common thing um, I see folks do is, uh, or I get a question about with, with picking and strumming, is strumming up. So strumming down is a pretty natural process. And you want to, um, your pick's more like at a 45 degree angle. I was not a math major, but it looks about like this. So when you're strumming down, that pick is doing a, about a 45 degree angle strumming down mostly hitting all, you know, all the strings. When you strum up, you should be rotating your wrist slightly so that your pick is pointing down toward the ground, again, at about that 45 degree angle. So it's this, it's not this, it's this. So you have this kind of emotion. And when you strum up, you don't have to hit all six strings. You can just kind of play the first you know, three or four. So that's kind of number two, is kind of paying attention to the wrist and the way that it's moving and the way it's rotating. And then the other thing is uh, a big piece of um, playing in rhythm is toe tapping. So if you could clap your hands while you're playing the guitar, that would be awesome. That's the most natural way that we all feel the beat of a song and feel the rhythm in a song. So you're listening to a song and you have, you see those people clapping. Well, obviously you can't clap and play the guitar at the same time. So what you need to be doing is tapping your toe while you're playing the guitar. It's kind of your built-in metronome that's in your foot. <laughs> so I want to talk about that a little bit right now. There's a lot going on actually when you're tapping your toe. And if you can tap your toe to the beat of the music, you can learn how to strum your guitar in rhythm. So you're strumming down. What I want you to do is imagine a piece of string, imaginary string tied around your wrist and tied around your toe. And 
what's happening is when your toe is going down and hitting the ground, it's going to drag your wrist down so you strum down. So you kind of visualize your toe going down. Here's the ground, here's your toe. So you have, when your toe hits the ground, your, your wrist is strumming down because that string's pulling it. Okay? When you pull your wrist up, you're going to bring your toe up with that piece of string. So you have this. And that's where everything's built. When your toe hits the ground, you're counting one, two, three, four. You add in the ands, that's the ups. So one and two and three and four and. So toe hitting the ground, drives your wrist down, one. Wrist coming up, brings your toe up, and. So one and two and three and four and. That's the, um, one thing I see people struggle with the most is doing that slowly. And I, I'm the same way. Like, I play too fast probably 80% of the time. But you really have to, when you're figuring out a difficult part of a song or a different strum pattern, you really need to kind of boil it back down to that basic toe tapping. And the one and two and three and four and. So if you aren't doing anything, but you're just tapping your toe, that's what I mean by the built-in metronome. So if you don't have a metronome, you should really get one. Um, you can download an app if you don't want to buy the actual metronome. I use one that looks old school analog. And that is just a really good way to train your brain to count in time. So when you have a that beep is basically when your toes hitting the ground. So kind of practice that first. And then add in the strumming, toe down, wrist down, wrist up, toe up. Now if you're doing that a lot, it's gonna, you're probably not going to stick with it long because it's going to be very boring. So one thing I tell folks to do is kind of a practice for all of this. So if you're wrapping all this together, you've learned how to hold your pick, you've learned that you're tapping your toes important to the beat. You've got that imaginary string going. One of the best ways I tell folks to kind of practice all this in one fell swoop is to choose a song. It doesn't matter what the song is. I would kind of go with one that's maybe middle of the road tempo wise. You don't want to, you know, probably choose a really fast song to do this with when you're first starting out. You can work your way up to that, of course. But you want to choose a song that you like. And I'm going to show you how to kind of use that song. And we're not going to worry about your fretting hand. All you're going to do with your fretting hand is going to mute your strings. So, um, here we go. Let's get this right. I'll put that down here. So you have your, um, just hold your hands over your strings like this. So you have a kind of a scrape or a muted strum. And you've got your toe tapping you're holding your pick and just start with down strum so you really just got to focus on down and then eventually you'll work your way up to the rotation part so you can turn on any tune that you want and kind of find the beat of that song oh well first you're gonna to listen to the ad for the song <laughs> uh, but once you're done listening to the ad in the song you can actually play it all right you get it. It's election season, we understand. So if you have any song and you want to listen kind of for the beat of that, so you have this kind of a, I don't know if you guys can hear that. So you have and this kind of, kind of steady. So my toe's hitting the ground. And I'm muting my strings, holding my guitar pick the right way, and just kind of doing one, two, three, four. You can do this with any song, doesn't matter what it is. Once you've kind of got that down, you're going to add in your up. So you're going to go uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. 
I just kind of like doing that more than using the metronome sometimes. And the metronome is good and you want to eventually, you'll eventually do this stuff without even thinking about it. It's just come, going to come natural to you. Uh, trust me on that. It might take a little bit, but it does happen. And I just like the kind of the music and listening and you're basically kind of drumming with your guitar. It's a very percussive instrument anyway. So you're in control of your pick and you're strumming those muted strings with your toe tapping. And it's a good way to put it all together. <laughs> yes, love Tom Petty. He's a good one there for uh, some good rhythm work. So that's kind of the, uh, the general gist of kind of doing that in rhythm, holding your guitar pick. If folks have questions, let's let me know. Um, otherwise, you can uh, click the link in the description of this video and you can get free lessons sent right to your inbox from Relax Learn Guitar. And uh, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, you want to uh, please click the subscribe button. And if you haven't clicked the notification bell, you'll get notifications whenever I have a live uh, video coming out or posting any videos. So you'll be able to stay up to date that way. I appreciate it. So thanks for tuning in. I'm not seeing many questions, so we'll kind of wrap it up. So thanks for checking things out. And again, um, uh, if you want to head over to the website and check things out, that'd be great. The Wandering Soul. Hmm. So maybe, uh, oh, nice. I'll have, to, I'll have to add that one to the old list. Is that a good one to kind of plug in and practice this to? John Denver is awesome. So um, and some of that stuff, it works great when there's just the guitar because then you're basically playing the drummer for the band. So, so head over to Relax on Guitar and check things out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys for the next live lesson. I plan on doing um, some more stuff here on YouTube and doing more live stuff here with uh, viewers. So we'll be looking for that and I'll see you guys for the next lesson. Take care. You are welcome.